off, I was visualizing. Dear Cassie and Moby, we just got new bathing suits and we can't wait to spend the summer swimming. Anything we should know before we dive in? Thanks, Dakota and Noah. Lucky for you guys, I... Yeah, I already put sunscreen on and reapplied. Now, where was I? Oh, lucky for you guys, I'm enrolled in the junior lifeguard course. So I can tell you all about how swimming is super fun and great exercise and helps beat the heat and... Aye, aye, Captain. Safety first. First off, you gotta know how to swim. The Red Cross and a bunch of other places offer lessons. If you can swim, it's still best to do it in places with lifeguards. Anyone can get in trouble, even pros. At backyard pools, make sure to tell a grown-up to watch you. And if you're still learning, stick to the shallow end and use support. Uh, right. By support, I meant a life jacket. It should fit snug as a bug, no riding up over the chin. Your parents can help you figure out if you need to wear one. Those bots know swimming isn't a solo sport. They're following the buddy system. Pair up with a pal who's at about the same level and stick together. Keep an eye on each other, so if one of you is in trouble, the other can help or alert a guard. Swimming during a thunderstorm is super dangerous. Lightning is attracted to bodies of water, which means you could end up seriously hurt. Go inside and stay there for at least 30 minutes after the last thunderclap. Wait, we're just gonna leave them in there? <sighs> ah, well, hello, sparkling sea. The beach certainly has its unique challenges. I meant ocean conditions. Know what you're in for by checking the color of the warning flag. Red means most hazardous, so no swimming. Yellow means rough conditions, so strong swimmers only, and use caution. Green is safest. But the ocean can be unpredictable on any day. Same as anywhere else you swim, pay attention to the lifeguards and follow the same safety precautions that I talked about back at the pool. First, stay in designated swim areas close to the shore. Even experienced swimmers can sometimes get tired, especially if the surf is strong that day. Jumping waves is my favorite, but you have to stay alert. If one's about to break on top of you, dive under it. You want to go far down enough to avoid all that tumbling water. And keep your arms out to protect your neck. For smaller waves, you don't need to dive under. With anything below waist level, just crouch down until it passes. At beaches with a steep drop, you may feel a strong backwash. That's when the waves break and rush back out to sea. All that water pulls things along with it, including swimmers. If you ever feel like the waves or backwash are too strong, head to shore. And if you're too tired to make it in, wave to a lifeguard. That's what they're there for. They'll blow their whistles when they see you. Then you can save your strength and tread water till they get there. Oh, right. At certain beaches, you'll see signs warning about rip currents. That's when backwash gets forced into deep channels between waves. The effect is much stronger than ordinary backwash. Rip currents are tough to spot, and getting caught in one can be scary. Fighting against it will just tire you out. The most important rule when you're stuck inside a rip is to stay calm. If you're feeling strong, swim across the current until you're out of it. Then you can swim back into shore. If you're feeling tired, raise your hand to alert a guard. Then tread water until help arrives. Righto. If you see someone who needs help, call a lifeguard or another adult. If there's someone else nearby, tell them to call 911. Meanwhile, you can try to help the swimmer from the shore. 
You don't want to jump in after them, or you might end up in trouble too. So, if they're close, brace yourself and reach out a long item to pull them in. If they're farther away, toss them something that floats. Once they're back on land, they may need CPR to get them breathing again. All lifeguards know how to do CPR. But you can get certified in it yourself as early as age 9. You can also train to be a junior lifeguard, like me. So, Moby, how'd I do? And when do I get my whistle? Um... It's my honor to be the valedictorian of this year's Junior Lifeguard Class! I want to thank Crusher and Little Jimmy. Never could have done it without you guys. of Poseidon.